Happy Halloween, Garage Stars. Today, we're going to be doing something very spooky. I, I know, like, my friends are not here today. Um, we're planning to go trick-or-treating soon, so they'll be here in a bit. But until they arrive, I'm going to be sharing Garage Band Horror Stories. And by the way, just to let you know, before we get into the stories, these are completely fake, fan-made, and they are not real in whatsoever. Even if I say in the stories that this is real, it's not. It's something I came up with, and with some help from my friends at the GarageBand community server on Discord. By the way, I'm going to give you a link to the GarageBand community server in the description down below. So go look for that. Anyways, we're going to be starting our horror stories. I asked you guys, uh, I'll be talking about my channel later, so keep an eye out for that. So anyways, let's get into the stories. Our first story is a theory that a fan had told me about. This fan theory suggests that Ken has multiple clones of Khan inside his closet. Warning, we're going to be discussing some 13 plus stuff, so if you cannot handle it, please click away from the video now. Now here we go. I have heard a lot about this theory. This theory suggests that Ken has a bunch of clones of Khan stuffed into his closet ready to deploy whenever something happens to Khan. Originally, the original brother Khan had officially passed away after his death many years ago. Ken could not accept the loss of Khan, so he had no choice but to experiment with his body. After his funeral, he had returned to the gravesite where his brother had been buried, dug him out, and experimented with him. He used what he could, and eventually he had created multiple clones. His parents had no idea that this was going on. So, they had Ken had to pass a story that Khan had faked his death just so his parents could get attention. Khan was a huge trouble, of course, after this, but the clone had no idea that he was a clone at all. And since then, Ken and Khan had hanged out with Tori and Lainey, not knowing that this was an actual clone. But many things had happened to Khan throughout the show. On the show, Khan had suffered a lot of trouble. He had been buried under snow. He had been turned into a dog. He had massive train issues. And he had been hurt and died many times on the show. And every time, Ken had to replace him. So nobody could find out that Khan was a clone. The original Khan is gone. All that was left is his double gangers. Ken has to make sure Lainey and Corey do not find out about this. If they do, they will never look at their friends ever the same way again. Ken keeps his con clone stuck in the closet with a secret passcode. And only he can enter. And no one, not even their parents, know this. If his parents found out that their son was a clone, not the original Khan that they once loved and raised. They would be horrified to look at their son, and Kin would be sent to a mental institution. But that's where the story will end, because Khan was never brought back to life as a clone. Kin was actually in the Peaceville Mental Asylum, where he had been declared insane by his parents. Corey and Laney had watched Kin from the room afar. And they were horrified to learn that Ken had killed his own brother. Okay, now we're going to be getting into a creepypasta. So I'll try my best not to make this such a cliche and obvious creepypasta. So, I've never done one before, so here I go. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Jordan. And I'm a big fan of this famous old television show called Garage Band. It was one of my favorite series of all time. 
I used to watch the show day and night whenever I felt that I was sad, angry, or anything like that. To be honest, my life was kind of hard on me because recently my parents had gone through a divorce and I'm currently living with my dad. My parents have 50-50 custody of me, so I have to go stay with my mom on the weekends, and I have to stay with my dad through the weekend. Meaning, I stay with my dad on Monday to Friday, and I stay with my mom on Saturday to Sunday. But anyways, enough about that. Basically, I was going through my mom's attic to look for some stuff to play with her, because... I wanted to play a board game with her because we haven't really been connecting lately. My mom had recently started avoiding me. She doesn't talk to me anymore. She welcomes me into the house and then just completely ignores me. One day I was in the attic looking for something to help us bond when I uncovered a DVD of GarageBand. I was so happy. My mom knew I loved this show and so she got both of the DVDs for me. But unfortunately, about five years ago, I broke the DVD. I broke one of them. The other one was saved. However, I never knew my mom went to go get this fixed. So I was very happy. Something seemed off about the DVD. Corey was just by himself. I didn't see anybody else around him. So, I went to my old DVD player that I have that actually works for Region 4. And I popped the DVD in. Everything played out the same because all the same logos came up. But when I got to the menu, it was just Corey by himself holding his own guitar. And his friend's instruments were not touched. It looked like it had been sitting there for about 10 years or so. And then I went to the press play menu. I pressed the play button. And the GarageBand intro was exactly the same. Nothing seemed off, except for one thing. Everything was red, but everything played this normal, sounded normal. Everything was fine, but when it got to the actual episode, something was wrong. Corey's house had looked completely spider webs, duster everywhere. The car was gone. It was just Corey sitting in a room. He was sitting on top of the stage. He was all alone. And then he started doing something weird. He started crying. I know, how is that weird? But Corey doesn't cry a lot. He rarely did. This time he cried like Leon Lion Smith was actually sad. He cried. I didn't know what was wrong with him. So I was starting to get worried. I was about to turn it off when Corey said, Wait, don't turn this off. It's because of you. It's all your fault. It's all your fault! I started freaking out. How did, why was he blaming me? I didn't do anything to him. I then did something stupid. I asked him, What did I ever do to you? And then, Corey started talking like he knew somebody was watching him. He said, It's because of you. My friends left me. We couldn't go anywhere big. And so, they gave up on me. They won't, they won't answer my calls. They won't pick up. I did everything to save GarageBand. While my sister got her wish. Garage band is over. And it's all your fault. I was starting to get scared. Why was he blaming me? Then I made the biggest mistake of my life. But I'm you don't know me. Oh I don't? Your name is Jordan. Isn't that right? I started freaking out. How did he know my name? Then Corey sounded different. He wasn't the original Corey that I knew, but he still was like sounding like an impersonation of him. He then said, It's because of you. 
I went too far. And then he told me something that dropped my heart. I killed my own sister because of you. I killed her. You hear me? I killed my own sister! I started becoming scared. I tried turning the TV off, but nothing was working. I pressed the button over and over again, but nothing was working. Corey said, you can't escape this. Because of you, my friends abandoned me. And I can't live with what I've done. All because you stopped watching the show. We started losing an audience. Peace Bill became afraid of me. I'm the number one most wanted criminal. And it's all your fault. I became horrified. I started doing everything I could. I tried unplugging the TV. But it wouldn't turn off. I started freaking out, so I tried leaving my room, but the door was locked from the outside. I couldn't even leave the room. It was like I was trapped and Corey had me right where he wanted me. You can't leave. Not until to the good part. I can't live with what I've done. And you're going to suffer for everything you put me and my friends through. Then he revealed one last detail. You know what I had to do? I had to keep everybody from finding out. And I lied. They didn't quit. I fired them. You know what I did? I killed my friends. My heart was sinking. I dropped to my knees, thinking about them. Ken? I plunged his glasses into his own eyes. While his screams, I cut his throat with a glass from his glasses. Then he told me about Khan. Khan. Then Khan. Oh, God, was it easy to skin that pig alive? <laughs> I had to uh, grab the drumsticks. Stick it right through his eyeballs. And I made him eat them. <laughs> Laney, what did you do to your best friend? My best friend, Laney? She couldn't handle what I had done. So she killed herself. She killed herself. She was the one girl who understood me. And now she's gone. I started freaking out. I started hyperventilating. I couldn't breathe. Why would he do this to his friends? His friends were gone. Corey started laughing maniacally. He started laughing like he was insane. <laughs> I started becoming horrified. I broke my TV. With the remote. Then the TV broke and went silent. I started crying. I couldn't breathe at what I had heard and what I had seen. Corey killed his own friends. Because of what? Because of a stupid mistake I made? Because I didn't watch the show? I had to get out of there. I broke the door handle and ran out. When I went to go tell my mom what I had done, something horrible had happened. My mother was lying on the floor with a glass full of orange juice. And there was a pill inside of it. And there was a message written on a piece of paper. It said, I can't live without my friends. Now you will live without your parents. I became horrified and ran out of the house. I didn't know where to go, so I had nowhere to stay. I later was put into a foster home, but I couldn't do anything anymore. I started going crazy. And since then, I never, ever watched GarageBand ever again because of that show. I lost everything. Sometimes, I hear him in my head. And I don't know if I'll ever escape.
one, maybe. I was doomed to this fate. Now we are on to our final story. This is going to be a fan made aftermath of the episode Confusion. So remember, this is fake and fan made. So let's begin our horror story. <clears throat> After we all got unfused, we were a mess. We couldn't do anything. Our bodies felt like liquid because we were dripping a bit of skin. Lainey and everybody started freaking out. I was freaking out too. The Newmans, they completely vanished. We had no idea what had happened to them. Kin told me that because they were so attached to us, figuratively and literally, they had vanished into thin air. I was at first happy because I hated Carrie and the Newmans, but then I started worrying about her because the weeks had gone by and the Newmans were reported missing. Nina had become scared of her sister's disappearance, so she put up signs of her sister, and we were worried. Apparently, Trina had suspected something was going on, but she didn't dare speak up. Apparently, Kin was freaking out like crazy. He told us that we had caused the Newman's disappearance. And we couldn't say anything about it because if we did, we could go to jail and possibly be labeled as kidnappers. Khan also freaked out and started breaking his drums in, in a panic. Lainey told us that we had to turn ourselves in and admit what we'd done. We did something so bizarre and something that had scarred Carrie's sister for a long time. We had to tell her first. I had no idea what we could do. So for now, I told them that we were going to go in hiding for a while until this all blew over. Lainey said that was the worst idea she's ever heard and she was reporting us. Kim had brought a syringe and injected some sleeping medicine into Lainey. We fell asleep and we tied her up. Anybody who was willing to rat us out had to be locked up. So we kept her tied up and put tape on her mouth. Lainey woke up and realized where she was. She was in my room. She freaked out because she didn't know what was going to happen. But Corey had convinced his friends not to do anything to her, but to just keep her quiet keep her hidden. They agreed. Over some time, Khan started thinking about what Lainey had said. They had to turn themselves in, or else there was going to be worse consequences for hiding them. Khan thought about if he should tell someone or not, but he didn't know what to do. Kin had asked him if he was okay. Khan said that he couldn't keep the secret anymore. Not because he wanted to say something, because he was starting to feel guilty about the Newmans. Kin for the first time got angry at his brother, like real angry, yelling at him that that was the stupidest thing anybody could do. And out of all the dumb things that Khan was going to do, why was he going to rat them out? Kin started freaking out and attacked his own brother. He started punching him and beating him. Khan was scared. He didn't want to hurt his brother, so he kept his defenses up. Eventually, he was so bruised. He passed out. Kin had looked at what he had done, and he started getting worried. What did I just do to my brother, he said. He had no choice but to tie him up, too. Khan was tied up very tightly because he was bigger than the rest. Khan had freaked out and noticed Lainey hadn't moved in a while. He was worried that the worst had happened. Corey was outside trying to get engaged. Afterwards, Nina had spotted Khan from the room and tried to get her attention. She noticed and acted in the quick of time. Nina had rushed into the room and noticed that Lainey had not been moving for an hour. Khan had freaked out trying to wake her up. He only had been put there for about 20 minutes. Afterwards, Nina untied them, but Lainey had stopped breathing. Lainey was in a coma. He was struggling to live. Afterwards, Corey and Kin were arrested. Lainey and Khan 
have been sent to hospitals to recover from their injuries. Khan was scared to think back at what happened. He eventually told Mina what happened and the demon's disappearance. Mina was angry, but at the end, she decided not to interact with Amy and Khan on it. Since then, Corey and Kin had been arrested and put into juvenile detention centers, where for now, that's where they were serving their time, and they would only be let out if Carrie and the Newmans came back. Since then, the Newmans never returned, and Mina had regretted not doing something sooner. And it was all because Corey was scared of the consequences. Okay, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this special Halloween video that I had created. I put a lot of time and effort into these, and if I sounded a little bit off or bad about this, I'm incredibly sorry. Just a little tired. Plus, it took a lot of time to figure out how to write the stories without being too gruesome and without, you know, acting like a bad creepypasta. So, I hope you guys love the stories that I had put out, and if you want to hear more actual scary garage band theories, scary garage band creepypastas, or scary garage band aftermath episodes, then please be sure to leave a like on this video. If this video gets 100 likes, if it gets 100 likes, we're going to continue more scary garage band stories. So, please be sure to leave a comment if you, what story you'd like to see next. Anyways, I hope you have a good Halloween. And if you haven't already, <gasps> Operation, hit that subscribe button so when you turn on the notification bells, you'll get a notification on when I upload a brand new video. And you make sure to leave that like and comment down below and share my videos around so everybody can come and join the Garage Band community. Is a <gasps> go! Anyways, I'm Corey Riffin. You better keep it Riffin. Thanks for coming out, everyone!